Let's go ahead and talk about how we're going to find the derivative of this unnamed function, this function that has a variable for a base and a variable for an exponent. It is not an exponential function. It is not a power function. So we're going to have to use a different technique in order to be able to find its derivative. And remember, we did an example over logarithmic differentiation. So if I call this the function y equals x to the x, and I introduce natural log to both sides, I would have the natural log of y equals the natural log of x raised to the power of x. I then use that property to pop that x down front, and now I have the natural log of y is x times the natural log of x. I turned an exponential or, or some expression with a variable in the base and a variable in the exponent that I don't know how to take the derivative of, I turned it into a product that I do know how to take the derivative of. So now this is an, again, explicit function of y completely in terms of x, and I've turned it into an implicit function when I introduce natural log. So I'm going to implicitly differentiate. Remember, y is some function in x, so this is going to involve the chain rule. It's the derivative of the outside, not changing the inside, times the derivative of what's inside. And the derivative of y with respect to x is just dy dx. Now on the right side, I have a product, so it's 1 d2 plus 2 d1, and remember the derivative of x is just 1. So if I solve this for dy dx, which is the next natural step in the process of implicit differentiation, I have multiplied both sides by y. That multiplied by y gets rid of that term, and all of this multiplied by y cleans up to this. x times 1 over x is 1. The natural log of x times 1 is the natural log of x. And now I want dy dx completely in terms of x, not in terms of x and y. So here's the relationship between y and x. So I'm just substituting in terms of x that function back in for y. So now here is the derivative with respect to x of the function x raised to the power of x. So you can clearly see, I don't see any similarities to the exponential rule. I don't see any similarities to the power rule. So when we see functions that have a variable expression as a base and a variable expression as an exponent, and they want us to find the derivative, remember logarithmic differentiation. Now I have another example on the next page on use substitution. So this is just logarithmic differentiation. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce natural log to both sides. The natural log of y has to equal the natural log of the quantity x squared plus 1 all raised to the sine of x. I'm going to use that logarithmic rule on the right-hand side of things here that allows me to pop the power down front and multiply it by what was already in the base. So now I have a product. So explicit, implicit, right? It is the derivative of the outside, not changing the inside, times the derivative of what's inside. Implicitly, that's dy dx. And now I have 1, d2, the derivative of the outside, not changing the inside, times the derivative of what's inside, plus 2, d1. And so if I'm to clean that up, I'm going to multiply both sides by y because I'm solving for dy dx. So that is y times, the numerator here is 2x times the sine of x all over x squared plus 1. And this is plus the cosine of x times the natural log of x squared plus 1. And now I substitute back in the original function in terms of x for y. And now I have the derivative with uh, the derivative of y with respect to x. So this is x squared plus 1 raised to the sine of x times what we found with our product rule plus the cosine of x 
times the natural log of the quantity x squared plus 1. So there we are. There's the derivative with respect to y of that function. And we'll practice some of that on our homework. So let's work one final example. This is an integral of what is clearly a exponential, general exponential function. Here we have a to the x, and when I say x, it's some expression in x. Technically, I guess we should say this is a to the u, where a is 5 and u is the expression in x that's 1 over x. And so I want to integrate that. I recognize that the integral of a to the u du, remember we said, was 1 over the natural log of the base a times a to the u plus c. So I need to recognize what u is, and in this situation u is 1 over x. So just like I know from u substitution, the process is unchanged. I ignore what's going on here, and I take the derivative with respect to x of what I chose to be u. The power pops down front, reduce the power by 1, write my differential. This actually cleans up to negative 1 over x squared. And again, it's going to help me to write it that way because technically what this is, is it's the integral from 1 half up to 1 of 5 to the 1 over x times 1 over x squared d x. So hopefully you can see that. So I'm just off by a negative. So what I would do is I would pop my negative out front, and now what I have is the integral of 5 to the u du. And that would back substitute if I substituted my choice for u. And what I found du to be, if I substituted back in terms of x for u and du, I would get this indefinite. Now I know this is a definite, but I would get this indefinite integral. So using what I know is the formula for the antiderivative, the general exponential function. That's the negative I'm going to pop out front. It's 1 over the natural log of the base times 5 to the u plus c. Now I have a definite integral, so I'm going to come down here. This is negative 1 over the natural log of 5. I'm going to substitute back in terms of my original variable, and I'm going to do the same process that I did all along, no matter what my function looks like, and do fundamental theorem. So I have negative 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the 1 over 1. That's plugging in 1, my upper limit for x. And then minus negative 1 over the natural log of 5 times 5 to the 1 over 1 half, which is actually squared. 1 over 1 half, the 1 half I invert, multiply straight across, and that's 5 squared. So there, I'm done. I can clean that up some more, but I don't have to. If it was a free response question, I would get all points for that as it's written. So there are some examples. That finishes up the general transcendental functions lesson. So come to class next time, and we'll do some mixed homework problems over exponentials and logarithms. We'll do some derivative work, and we'll do some antiderivative work.